Hello, how are you doing? It is Justin here for session five of Effective Practice. And today we are talking about practice makes permanent. Now, I'm sure you've all heard the saying practice makes perfect. Well, I'm afraid it's a complete load of bollocks. It's absolutely the stupidest saying that you will ever hope to not heed. Practice makes permanent, not perfect. If you keep practicing something wrong, you're going to get better at doing it wrong. You're not going to make it perfect. Right? Really, really big deal. Practice makes permanent, not perfect. So when you go to practice, it's absolutely 100% essential that you get it right and that you're practicing the good things. If you're practicing the wrong thing, you're going to be solidifying that mess in your head. Now, I had one with an old teacher who sketched out the harmonic minor scale for me one time when I was about 15 or 16. And uh, he wrote, he just did it really quick and he put one of the notes wrong. Right? And I practiced it. I thought it sounded funny, but he was my teacher. I just, you know, I just did it. And I practiced it loads wrong. And I still, still to this day, quite often make that mistake. If I'm doing something with a harmonic minor, it's somehow trained in there. You know, those first impressions count or whatever. And I, I had, did do quite a lot of practice on it, but it was, it's really ingrained. So it's really important that you try and get things right. Of course, inevitably, things are going to be not right occasionally. Right? It, it happens. I have it quite often when I'm teaching you guys songs. If I learned a song when I was 17, maybe I didn't transcribe it so well, and I didn't quite have it right. And then there's a little bit like, oh, there's this other bit. And it does take a lot more practice to correct a mistake later. Right? You can do it, but you're going to have to do it maybe 50 times more than you would have had to have done it right in the first place to get it to the same point. So it's really important that you make sure you get stuff right. And this goes for everything, whether it's uh, scales is the most obvious one. right? When you're learning a scale, if I'm learning a new scale or practicing a scale pattern that I'm not so sure of, I would be playing it like first note, Second note, checking with the chart, make sure I got it right, and then play it, you know, that slow. Really, I'm not exaggerating, it would be that slow, making sure that I get it absolutely right. A really good analogy for this is writing computer code. Because you think about how complex all of that stuff is in your brain when you're playing guitar, even just, you know, playing strumming and doing chords. There's a whole lot of messages that have to come out of your brain to your hands. You know, moving the fingers, getting your arms, feeling the right pressure on the instrument, all of that stuff. It's, it's immense if you had to try and write it down as a computer program, like get a robot to play guitar. The amount of code would be huge, right? So it's really important that you get that code right, because what you don't want to do is be going through that code and then going, stop, no, go back, no, lift off that and do, do, no, do it this way, that kind of stuff. It's just, it's so messy. If you do stuff right from the beginning, a scale, for example, you play your scale really slowly through you know, maybe four or five times, really slowly. And then you just start to speed it up a little bit. Now, if your brain's got all of that, that command line, if you like, all written out already, and it knows exactly what to do, it becomes a lot easier to go, hey brain, do that thing I was just doing, but do it faster. Right, that's really important, because if your brain's got to read through that stuff and make all of these corrections, it's really difficult to get things smooth and flowing and get it kind of musical and nice and instinctive and all those things we want out of music. So. That, that idea of programming stuff in real slow, it's a really big deal, you know. I still do it with all of the songs that I'm learning. If I'm learning something that's technically challenging or, or, I, or I just keep forgetting it or whatever, then I go back to doing it really slowly. I write it out and I just practice doing whatever it is really slow. Funny that I keep trying to play air guitar when I've got a guitar here, that's a bit weird. Um, so that's, you know, that's, it's really important. There's a, a, a saying that I like for my DIY stuff, which is measure twice and cut once, right? It's a, that's a, a very old saying that I think it's to do with dressmaking and stuff probably, but it applies for DIY and practice. So if you're slightly not sure about something, check it and check it again before you start your practice. It's a really big deal. Just always bear in mind that practice makes permanent. Don't think that just by practicing, because if you're practicing the wrong thing, it ain't going to help. It's going to make it worse, in fact, if you're practicing the wrong thing. So I really, I can't emphasize strongly enough how important it is to be practicing the right thing all the time. As a very beginner, you might find that there are some things that are beyond you that you didn't even know were mistakes yet. And that's fine, because you'll kind of grow through that period. So there are 
except that for everything that I'm saying in this series, there are exceptions, right? No, no one. There's not one set of rules, and there's not one way of doing anything, right? It's important that you remember that in all of these little chats, right? So, but do try and remember that practice makes permanent, not perfect. Make sure you get it perfect before you start practice, and then practice to make it permanent. I'll see you for another session very soon. Take care of yourselves. Bye bye.